Welcome back to my channel. I'm your host, Stephen. Today's episode is a continuation of the last two I have, which is taking keys off the upper joint and polishing them. Now we're going to put the keys back on the upper joint in a particular order. Don't forget to give a thumbs up, subscribe, like, and share afterwards. So let's start learning how to put the keys back on a clarinet. So there is a specific order you want to put keys back on a clarinet, but some don't have to go in a particular order. For instance, we know the register key. For instance, we know the register key is completely independent. You can put it on first, last, or any place in between. But for instance, the upper ring joint has to go on before the lower ring joint because the pin, if we recall, is also the pivot screw for the lower ring joint. And before we put on the ring joints, we want to put on the C-sharp, G-sharp key because it's underneath the ring keys. So we have to keep that in mind. So the first key I usually put on, I don't put on the thumb rest. I just kind of leave it because it's a flat spring. So I usually leave the thumb rest for last because it's a flat spring and I don't worry about flat springs very much. What I do worry about all the time our needle springs. So I'll do the side key first, then do C sharp, G sharp second. That eliminates two of the eight needle springs that we have, simply because your fingers go into these real easily. So I grab this key. We gotta remember there's a cradle here, right there that will hold the end of the needle spring. And as you can see off to the side, we have a board with our rods in it. It's easier to catch it initially rather than later. And you can feel it when it goes in. So our side B flat rod here. What you'll notice is many keys go in top down because if they ever get loose and fall out, well, if they ever get loose and they were coming from the bottom up, they would just fall out. You notice I'm using a really long screwdriver because I don't want the knurled end to mar up the finish on the clarinet. When we're screwing the screw rods in, you want to make sure that the back of the key is even with the posts. And of course the rod screws directly into it. Bingo. Works perfectly fine. Next, we're going to get the C-sharp, G-sharp key. Key is curved quite a lot. Basically half the clarinet. Once again, the cradle is right here. And we see the needle spring down there. And it's really, really low. So this one is one where you actually kind of like slide it on. As we have here. Up close you can see you gotta up close you can see you have to get that needle spring just right in there. And the problem with this key is that see a little indent? That needle spring cradle goes into that. So we have to slide it in and it goes into that position.
Now we got two needle springs out of the way. Now we want to deal with the ring keys. We have to get the top one first because it does have the pivot for the lower one. Here's the lower one. Here's the upper one. This one we put in first and then we'll do the... This one we put in first and we'll do the spring second. At this point, I'm going to put the thumb ring in. I want to make sure about the motion. Second to last needle spring. As I mentioned before, this pivot point is from this rod here. We can see it right there. And this is basically screwed down there. <clears throat> so we're going to put this in an angle. Catch the top. Goes down here. The screw. Now we have the needle spring. Make sure it's in the cradle. Visually check it. All right. Next on the top is the eighth throat key. It goes over the B ring and the B pad up here. It's a flat spring. Be careful of the needle spring on the other side. Many times people will use their screwdriver to push in the rod, which is fine. Which if you saw my other video where briefly talked about screwdrivers, this head here is a T-type head where it has flat sides. Normally with regular screwdrivers, when you push in a rod, you can space open the slot there. So you want to be careful not to push too hard. You got to get it just right. Then it goes in. Of course, you have to make sure the flat spring is in its cradle mount down there, which are, if you remember, these slots. Some of these drill keys do have cradles right here. Now 
next the last needle spring we'll put back on the G sharp a flat key once again making sure that the cradle here for the needle spring gets in the play properly and usually if you notice I go this way with it catches the needle spring and up it goes I'm at a slight angle to keep the knurling above the body here because it's a shorter screwdriver. Key works. Now this key, if you notice the flat spring, slides underneath underneath C sharp G sharp key. So when you put it in, kind of start here, open this up a bit, and get it on. This one has a flat piece of metal back there, blued steel that this sits on. Create a good spring for it. And you could put this on before the C sharp G sharp if you want. I tend to try to put on needle springs first just to get them out of the way. And this one, as you can see, slides in there really easily. You notice this one is really, really short. And when we took it off, we had to use, I used the needle spring and I pushed it out after I got all the key work off. Next, there's really no easy way of doing this next part. You got to put all three keys in at the same time. You have to make sure that these are on tight. And if they rotate at all, you have to do it again because these really short flat springs have to sit on these little cradles right here. So we put our key work together first and remember these two keys actually sit on top of each other and in each other as one. And we have this third key here. Just like that. And they kind of just kind of go straight down and then forward a bit. These do have the trill key guide you have to be aware of. And working with cameras in front of me makes it a little bit more difficult. Especially when I hit it with my head and it moves. <laughs> it was easy. Once I got my cameras out of the way, it was easy. These are a little bit hard to get in because they're at an angle.
open that. Oops, I meant to replace this with a new cork key, but I'll do that later. That's my desktop, um, my desktop uh, clock I have here, vintage clock. There we go, look at that. Once you have this done, there is a quick leak test you can do if you don't have a machine. Um, I won't use the rubber thing. Put your hand on the bottom, make sure it's on there good. Close up all the keywork without opening something else and lightly push blow into it then slowly increase your pressure now the reason you increase your pressure is normally there are a couple keys here where if the tension of the springs are too light they'll pop open while playing ever so slightly and your tone will get diminished a bit that usually is the throat key that's an issue sometimes the side key and on the lower joint you'll be your e flat key on your right pinky Usually that one key, the, the spring tension gets weak and needs to be adjusted. So if you're ever playing and you're playing really loud and your tone seems to drift off, it's usually because a key opens up because of the pressure. It's usually fairly easy to find. Because if you blow like this, and if you get, if you get a ru rubber stopper and plug the end of it, you can get it usually at a hardware store. You can blow slightly and then use your other hand and push down key work to try to figure out where the leak is. Of course, there's other ways of figuring that out, which we'll discuss in later episodes, but this is just a quick test you can do. Holds pressure really well, just like it did before I took it apart to put it back together again. Thank you for listening today. Any questions or comments, please post them down below. Don't forget to give a thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe. You gotta love the knowledge, you gotta love life, and you gotta love clarinets. We'll see you next time.